lot of you have asked me which bottles you should buy to start making coffee cocktails. So now, let's strip the bar, and here are my top 10. So these are my current favorite bottles to work with to make delicious coffee cocktails. They're designed to be extremely versatile, and if you want to see how to use them in future, make sure you subscribe along. Throughout the video, I'll make recommendations and also provide some alternatives based on your kind of flavor preferences. And then in the description, there's gonna be links to each bottle, which are affiliate links, so it really helps support the channel, so thank you. And also links to different videos where you can use each bottle in different recipes from the last year. These bottles are perfect gifts for your loved ones or even for yourself. And now we should start with number one, which is choosing the perfect house whiskey. So first of all, I'd be looking for a sort of house whiskey. And whiskey is something I could talk about all day long. It's got a huge kind of flavor spectrum, just like coffee. And also it comes from all different parts of the world, just like coffee. So there's a lot of kind of commonalities between coffee, but you don't want to be intimidated by the vast spectrum of whiskey. What we're going to do here is look for a flavor profile in the whiskey that suits the flavor profiles you love. So there are no real rules when it comes to choosing a whiskey, but there is one tip I'd give and that you want it to be high enough intensity to kind of cut through the cocktail or the coffee cocktail you're making to make sure you can still taste the whiskey and it's not completely overwhelmed by the coffee flavor. So when it comes to coffee, I love to drink very sweet coffees, very fruit forward coffees, maybe some tropical fruit in there. And with that in mind, when I choose a whiskey to pair with it, I want to complement these things. So something like Cavalan from Taiwan would be a really good choice. This has exactly those kind of flavor characteristics, tropical fruit, vanilla, toffee, very, very sweet and plenty of intensity to cut through the coffee. And this is a really delicious whiskey, but not the most affordable from this list. So we want to make sure we're getting a whiskey that is kind of very reasonable and accessible for a lot of people. So you could go with a bourbon, which has those really kind of rich toffee flavors. Again, lots of vanilla, lots of body. So a really good choice for coffee cocktails. I really like Buffalo Trace, but there are lots of great bourbons on the market. Or you could go for something from Scotland, which would be very delicious. So I really like to mix with Monkey Shoulder and also Glenfiddich 12, both of which are fruit forward whiskies, but slightly less intense than the other two. So when you mix with these two whiskies specifically and any kind of slightly lower intensity whiskies, make sure you allow for this in the recipes when you're making your coffee cocktails. So high intensity, still pretty high intensity, but not quite so much. And this is a really good starting point for whiskey. So as a little pro tip, if you want to taste a lot of different whiskies before committing to a big old bottle like one of these, you can buy little 50 ml tasters and you can try many different whiskies, see which ones you love, and then go for that one when you're looking to buy a full bottle. You can pretty much find a whiskey to pair with any type of coffee. And I've made lots of coffee cocktail recipes, which I'll link in the description on the channel, including a clarified coffee sour, a tropical coffee sour, and also a cacao butter washed coffee old fashioned using whiskey paired with coffee. So throughout the video, all of the links to different recipes, how you can use these ingredients will be in the description below. So check those out as your next watches. Now we've chosen our sort of house whiskey. We can look at another kind of whiskey, which is smoky whiskey. So when it comes to choosing a smoky whiskey to kind of complement your house whiskey, which is a bit more fruit forward and kind of vanillary, I really love Glenfiddich Fire and Cane. And this list isn't designed to be brand specific. It's just designed to be the bottles I really enjoy mixing with at the moment and the bottles I've used a lot in the past year on this YouTube channel. So Glenfiddich Fire and Cane is a really good introductory smoky whiskey. On one hand, it's fiery and peaty and smoky, but on the other hand, it's also very sweet from the rum barrel aging. So somewhat peaty, but also very sweet to balance it out. But if you want to go for full on peat and intensity, you can go for something like a Laphroaig an Isla whiskey, and you can get those really kind of intense, medicinal, high smoke, high intensity whiskies, which will complement a few different coffees. So whereas the Fire and Cane, because it has that slightly lower intensity, can work with a big range of coffees, anything kind of citric, maybe a natural process with those kind of fruit forward characteristics. With the Laphroaig, you need to take it to a slightly darker roast usually. So you've got the intensity from the coffee and those really big kind of roasty flavors to balance out the Laphroaig, which has very, very high intensity. So these would be two kind of recommendations as starting points. You could even blend these with your house whiskey to bring down the peatiness. And I've used this in recipes such as the hot coffee toddy, a pumpkin spice latte hack, and also a smoky coffee Manhattan, all of which I'll link in the description below. So you can use the recipes and make sure you've got a utility for our smoky whiskey. So now we've spoken about whiskey, we should talk rum. So when it comes to rum, again, I'm not getting too hung up on methodologies or definitions. We're talking flavor focused decision making. So we're going to start with a light flavored rum with kind of vanilla, coconut, white chocolate, maybe some green banana notes, which is very versatile in a lot of coffee cocktails. 
and I particularly like Diplomatico Planas. It has all those flavor characteristics and it can work in lots of different coffee cocktails, which I've put on the channel. So this kind of rum brings kind of creaminess and body to very kind of high intensity coffee cocktails like the espresso martini, which I'll link below as my ultimate espresso martini recipe, where you freeze this, which is very important. But it can also work in very light, delicate coffee cocktails like the clarified coffee sour, bring in a kind of tropical fruit character to complement things like passion fruit and lots of other kind of tropical flavors. So extremely versatile, extremely delicious, and the kind of creaminess is really advantageous in lots of different coffee cocktails. So if you don't have Diplomatico Planas available, you can use something like Havana 3, which is also very delicious, but I really do like this because of the kind of creamy texture and those really distinctive flavor characteristics. So this is our lightest flavored rum, and next up, we're gonna go for our sort of medium intensity rum. So our fifth bottle is gonna be our next rum selection, which is kind of the middle ground between very light, low intensity rums and very intense, high molasses rums. So now we're moving into a kind of more aged rum. This is around eight years aged and you're getting more of the kind of vanilla notes coming through, more kind of fudge, salted caramel. And this is probably one of the most versatile bottles you can buy. So I've used this on the channel with things like the spent coffee daiquiri, which pairs it with leftover limes and also some coffee flavor in there as well. So you've got the kind of light refreshing characteristics, but you can also use it in things like a tropical espresso martini, where it brings lots of body, lots of sweetness, a little bit of kind of molasses character and this pairs with pretty much almost any style of coffee, from something very light and bright and floral, maybe a washed Ethiopian coffee, right through to something more intense and rich, maybe your more chocolatey Brazils. By having this in your back bar, you can make many, many different drinks. However, you can also find a slightly darker, sweeter, more rich rum, which is our next choice. So our final rum choice is gonna be our kind of more intense rum. We're going for something either very sweet or very molassesy. So when it comes to the Diplomatico Reserva Exclusiva, this is an extremely sweet rum. If you've never tried rum before, this is a great starting point because it's got those really accessible flavors, the kind of vanilla, but also really kind of sweet chocolate, caramel. Whereas Gosling's Black Seal is a really banging rum. I love this. I've used it in things like the Coffee Jungle Bird, but this does have a very high molasses flavor in your rum. You're gonna get much more kind of bitter sweet notes, which can be really useful in coffee cocktails. So this would be my final rum choice, either something very sweet or something very intense. When it comes to pairing these rums with coffee, you want something high intensity. So if you had a very light coffee or a very bright and citric coffee, it'd be pretty much overpowered by particularly the Goslings, not so much the Reserva Exclusiva, but you wanna go for something with plenty of body, plenty of richness, that kind of sticky texture, just like these rums have to complement them nicely. So now we've got our rums, we've got our whiskies. we're gonna look at number six. So the first of our aperitif style bottles is in the fridge. So really important to this kind of drink is a really good quality sweet vermouth. And I really like the Cocky Storico because it's got really kind of high intensity and stands up against the coffee, which is true of kind of all the bottles on this list. You want higher intensity to make sure it cuts through the final drink. So in here we've got flavors of kind of wine, citrus, kind of herbal notes, some spice, your kind of citrus peels, and it's super delicious. And it works really well with a lot of different coffees particularly kind of bright, vibrant coffees where it kind of balances the sweetness of the cocky. So this is a really good starting point. I use this in a lot of different recipes, but it's often tied to another ingredient, which is number seven. And number seven is your sort of bittersweet aperitif. So something like Campari would be our sort of quintessential bittersweet aperitif, really delicious. It's got kind of red fruit in there, some kind of bittersweet orange, grapefruit, a little bit of rhubarb. If you've never tried Campari before, give it a go. I think it's delicious. A lot of people think it's far too bitter. And if that's you, you could go for something like Aperol, which is a little bit brighter, a little bit sweeter, a little bit less bitter with similar flavor characteristics. Or if you wanna go for a real curveball and go for a gentian-based bittersweet liqueur, you can go for Sousa. So this is really popular in white Negronis, which can work really well with coffee. Whereas your Aperol and Campari tend to work in more traditional kind of Negroni aperitif style drinks. Obviously the Aperol Spritz is very popular as well. Again, which works really well with coffee. However, if you want to spike your aperitif style drinks, we're going to need some gin. So again, gin is a very, very broad category, lots of different styles, lots of different ways of making gin in different parts of the world. But fundamentally here, you want to choose a gin which is juniper forward. So I really like the Avaldor Cornish gin, which is really kind of juniper forward, but you've got really good options like Beefeater, Chase GB gin, but you want that kind of London dry style, high juniper, high body, so that it ties in with the coffee. So now we have gin, 
we have bittersweet liqueur and we have a sweet vermouth. You can make many different Negroni variations. Everyone loves them. They work great with coffee and I'll link some in the description below. We've done the espresso Negroni two ways. We've done some really delicious pre-batched coffee Negronis and we've done the improved coffee Negroni, all of which are very different, but based around that Negroni template. We've also done a really delicious blood orange coffee g and in our coffee and orange episode. And also we've done things like the espresso J, espresso J, Garibaldi using Campari. So all of these will be linked below so you can watch them after. But now we've got our gin, we should probably get to number nine, which might surprise you being quite low on the list. And this is vodka. So controversial opinion. I don't even think vodka would have been on my list of top 10 bottles for coffee cocktails, were it not for the espresso martini, where it's a really important ingredient. And also the fact that it's a really good neutral base to make your own kind of liqueurs, to add a little bit of alcohol to syrups and to make different infusions like vanilla vodka, citrus vodka, which obviously it's a really good base for. When you're choosing a vodka, you wanna go for something kind of creamy, high body, ideally a potato vodka, which is a really, really good option for me. You've got brands like Chase, but this is a really good one. This is the Aval d'Or Cornish vodka, potato vodka. And when you're making an espresso martini, again, this wants to be frozen, where it becomes a really nice kind of sipping vodka as well. So it's versatile, it's extremely neutral, so it can bring alcohol to coffee cocktails, but it doesn't necessarily bring too much more. So I do have vodka on my list, but it's a close one. And then number 10 is kind of up to you. So number 10 is essentially up to you. If I were to ask you what you love to drink, the answer you give would be number 10. So if you love tequila, this can be a really useful ingredient for making coffee cocktails, but it's very distinctive. And the same can be said for mezcal, even more so. So tequila brings those really nice agave notes. If you love margaritas, if you love picantes, you can add coffee to these really, really well. I recently did an espresso picante using both of these, which was very delicious. So I'll link that at the end, but you might also want to get some liqueurs. So Pedro Jimenez is a really good kind of sweet sherry, just tastes like liquid raisins, which is a really good combination with coffee and rum, very delicious. Something like Umashu, which is a Japanese plum sake based liqueur, really complex, really delicious, can work really well with coffee. I use this in the cacao butter washed coffee old fashioned. And then something orange based like Quantro would be really versatile because coffee and orange are a really, really good pairing. That being said, a lot of these liqueurs can be made to a really high level at home. And next year we're gonna be exploring sustainable, zero waste ways of making a lot of ingredients on the back bar. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know which of these bottles is most useful for you. And in the comments below, if I missed any that you love to pair with coffee, let me know. All the bottles on our now very well stocked back bar can be found in the description below. Disclaimer, these are affiliate links, but by using these links, you have to do nothing and it also really supports the channel. So I appreciate you doing that. And if you want to subscribe to the channel to see how these bottles and many, many more are going to be used next year, make sure you subscribe. So if you want to do that, you can click here. If you want to learn how to balance and season coffee cocktails using many of these ingredients, you can click here. And if you want to see more coffee cocktail recipes, you can click here. So that's the back bar tour. Make sure you let me know how you get on and I'll see you soon. Cheers.